Hi everyone, so another video on normal distribution. Uh, I want to go quite fast because I want to get to the problem solving section of this. All right. So we're going to first introduce the inverse normal. So we know um, quite a bit about the normal distribution, uh, but this time we're given an area and we want to find what the value of A is to make that area. So we've got X is normally distributed with mean 30 and standard deviation 5. So for part A, we've got probability of X is less than some number is 0.3. So we draw a picture to make sense. There's 30. Now, where must A be? A must be left of the mean because 0.3 of the area, so remember the area is 1, 0.3 of it is less than 0.5 because remember it's symmetrical about the mean and we work from left to right. So this whole thing is half of the area. So 0.3 must lie to the left of the mean because we're going from left to right. So I'm expecting a number for A less than 30. So I go to my calculator, right, and I'm going to go menu, 7, and then we go inverse normal. So the area I'm looking for is 0.3, the uh, standard deviation is 5, and the mean is 30. So it tells me that it's 27.37. So A is 27.4 to free SF, do you see? And that makes sense, because it's here. Part B, probability of X is less than A, is 0.75. Now, draw a picture, there's 30. Again, what is 0.75? If it works from left to right, it must be to the right of the mean this time, because in the green, that's 50%, and therefore, 75% must be a little bit extra. Okay, so I'm expecting a value of A bigger than 30. So again, I go to my inverse bit, number three, and my area this time is 0.75. So I should get 33.4, which makes sense because it's to the right. There we go. Part C, probability of X bigger than A is 0.4. Okay, let's have a look at that. So 30 is here, all right? Remember, it's bigger than, so that means everything to the right of A is 40%. So that means it must be here. Okay, this must be 0.4 or 40% because, well, as you know, this is 50%. This will be 10%. So the remaining 40% must be above A, and A, therefore, must be to the right of the mean. But our calculators only work from left to right. So I need to do 1 minus the probability of less um, of x less than a is 0.4. So therefore, probability of x less than a would be 0.6, wouldn't it? Okay. Um, and therefore, we're going to go to our inverse calculator again. So if we press equals there, and we've got 0.6. And I'm expecting the thing to the right. So yes, it is to the right. So A is 31.3, okay? And that is to the right of 30, so I know we're all good. Part D, though, slightly harder. This time I've got probability of 32 less than X less than A is 0.2. So again, my picture, my standard deviation, uh, my mean is 30. So 32 is here, and A is bigger than 32 and that contains 20% of the data, so 0.2 here. So we know that our things work from left to right. So I need to go, this is the same as the probability of x is less than a minus the probability of x is less than 32, must be 0.2. So the probability of less uh, x less than a is 0.2 plus um, our probability of x less than 32, so I need to work out what that is. So I go to 7, I go normal CD, minus 1,000 is our standard. Our upper is the thing I'm looking for, which is 32. Uh, our standard deviation is 5, and our mean is 30. So 0 0.655, 655, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but I'm going to store that as A, and then I need to go back to my inverse thing, don't I? Because I need to find what this A is here. So I go here, I go inverse, and my area is going to be 0.2 plus the thing I just stored as A, so alpha A. So that's not uh, 0.8554. So it's A must be 35.3, which again makes sense because it's bigger than 32. Okay? 
Now, that's how you use the inverse normal function on your calculator. What we need to talk about now is converting to the standard normal. What is the standard normal? The standard normal is a thing that I showed you at the very start of normal distribution where <clears throat> the mean was zero, so it's called Z. We call Z the standard normal. Uh, the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. Okay, so one, so sigma, two sigma, three sigma. And just a bit of general knowledge again, but just remember that 68% of the data is contained one standard deviation either side of the mean. Two standard deviations is 90, uh, <clears throat> 97%, isn't it? Um, sorry, not 97%, 95%, I'm getting my numbers mixed up. 95% is two standard deviations away, and three standard deviations away is 99.7, so we have to try and remember that, okay? Now, people always ask me, what is Z? They don't really get what Z is. Z is the number of standard deviations away. So if I'm trying to find probability of Z is less than one, on my standard normal, one, two, three, okay? I'm trying to say how much of the area, which is still one, contains all the data one standard deviation and less away, okay? Um, now, it used to be, before your magic calculators came out, it used to be that we had to convert to the standard normal to solve any problems. And actually, what your calculator does is it just does it for you, so you don't even have to think about it. But you will need it in order to do problem solving. And converting to the standard normal is literally coding. So if you see, this is the graph here represented by your normal distribution um, mentioned here, so 175. 10 squared, okay? The mean is 175, that's here, and our standard deviation is 10. We need to, though, transform this to the standard normal, because the standard normal is the stuff that we know everything about, and that's what your calculators are working on, okay? So can you sh see that we need to shift it 175 to the left, and we need to scale it down by a factor of 1 over 10. So if I shrink times this by 1 over 10 on the y value, I get my y value here that I should have, and I need to scale it 175 to the left. So in a sense, what I'm saying is that x modeled 175 10 squared needs to be converted to z with normal uh, mean 0 and standard deviation 1. So what do I mean in practice? So let's say I want to find x is less than 150, OK? If I want to convert that to Z, then I need to scale it by shifting it 175 to the left and dividing it by 10, okay? And this will now be in standard normal form. So 150 minus 175 divided by 10 is minus 2.5. So Z is less than minus 2.5. So I'm asking for the probability on the standard normal, there's zero, minus 2.5, everything less than 2.5 standard deviations lower than the mean, okay? So in a sense, if it says convert to standard normal, what I'm saying is that probability of Z is less than Z is the same as the probability, um, sorry, what I'm saying is that the probability of x is less than some number x is the same as the probability of z is less than x take away the mean over the standard deviation. All right? Okay. Now let's look at that in practice because I think it's probably a little bit confusing at this point. So at the moment, there's no real need to convert to standard, uh, standard normal because your calculators do it for you anyway, but you will need it in a second, as you'll see. So you can see here the normal distribution, 154, 12 squared. If I want to find the probability of x less than 154 and convert that to standard normal, which remember has mean 0, standard deviation 1. This is the same as probability of less at z is less than my x value. Take away my mean value, which is 154, over my standard deviation, which is 12. 
So 154 take away 154 is zero. So I'm looking for my little thing. Here's my standard normal, mean zero. I'm looking for everything less than zero, which hopefully you'll agree is 0 0.5. 0.5% 0 of the data is left of the mean, okay? Part B, probability of X is less than 160. This is the same as Z is less than 160. Take away my mean over my standard deviation. So this is probability of Z less than, so 160 take 154 divided by 12 is a half, so 0 0.5. So I draw my little thing, here's zero, 0 0.5 is here. So I'm looking for all this data. So again, I need to go to my calculator emulator. I want just number seven, normal CD, low is minus 1,000 like normal. Uh, my upper is 0 0.5, my mean is, uh, my standard deviation is one, and my mean is zero. So I'm expecting a number uh, to the right of zero, which I do get. So Z, so <clears throat> this is going to be 0 0.691, okay, to 3SF. That's my probability of that happening. All right. So I think that should be good. Let's move on to where you're really going to need this. So I think we can skip that one. Okay, this is where we can use it for problem solving like this. Let's say we have a normal distribution and we don't know the mean of it. So we're gonna have to convert this to standard normal to make this work. So it says, given that the probability of X is bigger than 20 equals 0.2, find the value of mu. So we know that this needs to be converted first to standard normal 0, 0.1 squared, okay? So, probability of x is bigger than 20. It's the same as probability of z is bigger than 20 minus mean over standard deviation equals 0.2, right? Because they're the same thing, z and this, uh, and this x, right? So, at the moment, I've got on my standard normal, here's my mean zero, and I've got a number z, this 20 minus mean over three, this is the z value I'm trying to find. This value, uh, everything bigger than that must be 0.2, can you see? Right, so this is 20 minus mean over three. 20% of the data is contained in here, can you see? Now we know that our calculators work left to right. So, we know then that the probability of Z is less than that, 20 minus mean over three must be 0.8, right? Because all the stuff in green is 0.8. So now we can use our inverse calculator stuff, our inverse normal calculator. So if I go distribution, inverse normal, the area is 0.8. And I know that the standard deviation and the mean of the normal, the standard normal is 0 and 1. That's what I'm talking about. You're using known results in order to find something that you don't know because your calculator knows everything about the standard normal, but it doesn't know everything about this x. So the value of z in here must be 0.416, okay? So 20 minus mu over 3 must be 0.8416208. Uh, okay? So what I need to do is rearrange to find mu. So I'm going to times by 3 and then do 20 minus that. So 0.8416208.47 times by 3 and then 20 minus that. I get 17.47, so 17.5. That's the mean that we're looking for, all right? That might be quite fast, so do it again if you need help with that. <clears throat> so this is going to be a bit harder, though. This time, I don't know the mean or the standard deviation. So if ever I don't know the, the mean of something or the standard deviation, or both, I have to convert to standard normal because all my maths, all my calculator knows everything about the standard normal possible, okay? So we're starting off, we're always given something. So if I'm given that x is bigger than 35, is 0.025%, then I go straight to my standard normal just like I did before. 
So this is the same as z is bigger than 35, take away the mean, which we don't know, and we don't know the standard deviation either. But we do know this is 0 0.025, right? So again, if we drew our standard normal graph, there's 0. z is bigger than this value, gives us 0.025% of the data. So 0.025%, uh, sorry, 2.5%, which is 0 0.025, must be to the right of the of the mean because we know that this is 50% and this half must be 50%. So this at the moment is our 35 minus mu over standard deviation. So we're gonna we then know that z less than 35 minus mu over sigma must be one minus this. So just like everything in green, like we did before. All right. So this must be 0.975. So again, I go to my inverse calculator. Um, so we're here. Our area is 0.975. And I know my standard deviation and my mean for the standard normal. So 35 minus mu over sigma, it's the same as 1.95, blah, 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 which, um, which simplifies to 1.96. So again, we're going to introduce the uh, percentage points tables in class. So for now, trust me, that's going to round to 1.96, okay? So there's our first equation. I just times it up by sigma. This is equation one, but I've got two unknowns. I've got a mu and I've got a sigma. So I need a second bit of data, which is what this thing is about here. So it says probability of x is less than 15, which we know in z form is 15 minus mu over sigma it's 0.1469. So again, draw our thing. There's naught. What is 0.1469 of the area? Well, that has to be left of the mean because it's less than this. Okay, so this is 15 minus mu over sigma. So I go straight to my inverse normal again, right? So this time I'm looking for 0.1469 uh, of the data. And our standard deviation and stuff is the same. So I can see that 15 minus mu over sigma is minus 1.049, uh, etc. So we call that 1.05, right? And that makes sense because there's zero. It's got to be left of zero, so it's got to be negative. And just like the 1.96 here, it's got to be positive because it's above zero. You see, it's to the right of zero. So again, if I multiply up, I get 15 take mu is minus 1.05 sigma. And now I've just got simultaneous equations between this one and this one. So I can add those together, right? So the mu's, uh, sorry, not add them, I uh, can minus them. So then the mu's cancel. So 35 take 15 minus mu minus minus mu, that's gone, is 1.96 sigma minus minus 1.05, so plus 1.05 sigma. So I know then that sigma must be 35 minus 15 divided by 1.96 plus 1.05. So this is, sigma is 6.64. And if I shove that back into any one of these, I can find my mean. So my mean is going to be minus 1.05 answer uh, 15 subtract that so my mean is 21.97 uh, so we call it 22.0 uh, to free SF okay oh that was quite fast I wonder how you kind of found that but key thing then don't know Sigma or don't know mean we must convert to standard normal because it's all programmed in our calculators if we want to solve this problem all right end of video okay.